Welcome back to Sharing Our Cultures. Joining me now is Dr. Shumei Li, and she is a professor in the Faculty of Education. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Very well. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. OK, it is certainly our pleasure. Now, so you're a professor in the Faculty of Education. Can you tell us a little bit about your, maybe your research area and what you teach? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So. Um, I specialize in second language education mm -hmm. and uh, broadly I basically look into all aspects of a second language learning, teaching and the support. And so my teaching areas, the courses I teach are second language teaching methodologies, uh, curriculum and uh, academic writing in particular. That's a difficult area and uh, lots of research there. So I mostly teach in graduate levels. And my research, and that's an interesting topic, <laughs> since I came here in 2010, and I noticed a gap in research. Like we had a lot of uh, newcomer children here in the schools and uh, however, uh, there was uh, not much research done about their challenges, and which is interesting because uh, I received feedback from classroom teachers and talking about uh, some of the issues. So I couldn't find any literature. So th that's how I went into this line of research. And it's usually the policy of the Department of Education to place them in schools in the age gate appropriate uh, classes. Mm -hmm. um, but some of those children come, particularly if they were from refugee backgrounds, where they have huge gaps in their academic and educational learning. Yes, exactly. What have you found out, and how do you think uh, those children could be well met in their needs? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I have to say, Although uh, I'm doing research on broadly newcomer educational support, mm -hmm. and then I eventually focused on one particular group, mm -hmm. that is children with, uh, from re refugee backgrounds, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, because they obviously were faced with particular difficulties mm -hmm. uh, that were not shared by other groups, right? Mm -hmm. Different from the regular immigrants and, or international students. Mm -hmm. So these are all newcomers, but the refugee children, obviously, they had a lot more challenges. Mm -hmm. So we just can't treat them, although they study in the same ESL classroom, mm -hmm. and we can't treat them, you know, the same way, we can't teach them the same way or work with them the same way, doesn't matter in ESL classes or in the regular classroom. Okay. So okay, so at their supports, because I know there's the LEARN program that's available in some of the schools from these children, mm -hmm. but what so far has been developed that could assist them to be successful, because I think that's what we really want, for them to come here mm -hmm. and be successful in their academic learning. Yeah. So initially, what I was really happy mm -hmm. to find was the LEARN program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the LEARN program was, you know, I think it was a design, it was a genius, you know, right. just uh, perfect for these children. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, only, I think, offered at Holy Heart mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, senior high students and then Brother Rice for the junior high students. Okay. And yet the problem is we had back then only these two schools. Mm -hmm. And so we have kids scattered all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Due to the government housing arrangement. And so they might not be on the catchment area, mm -hmm. the school buses. And so these kids were left, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I would say that was a big gap in our support mm -hmm. because these kids had to catch the, the metro bus to go to the school, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine people coming here with nothing and lost everything and they had very little financial resources mm -hmm. to maintain their life, mm -hmm. just the 
basic life, right? Mm -hmm. So the transportation was a big expense for them, and so a lot of kids ended up skipping school, just not coming, right? Mm -hmm. And so that uh, negatively affected their graduation rates. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly we know how important education is for these kids. Without completing high school, middle school education, what would they turn out to be, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's not a situation we want them to be, to be in. So that's how, and we started, uh, I interviewed learn teachers, I interviewed um, ESL teachers, not just the holy heart teachers, you know, they have, uh, and a, com a complete set of programs there, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only uh, comprehensive ESL support in school system. Mm -hmm. And all the others are itinerant teachers. Mm -hmm. And you know, I also have a linguistic background from second language acquisition, this pr perspective, offering kids two hours, four hours per seven day teaching cycle of English instruction, that is just, a, that's a joke, it's far from enough, right? Mm -hmm. So these kids need a lot more support. So I ended up, you know, well, certainly uh, writing all my findings in, the, in my research articles, and meanwhile I'm trying to make some noise and trying to talk mm -hmm. to people, talk to people in the school district and also uh, I had a conversation with the previous Minister of Education and some officers, mm -hmm. and to draw the, their attention to these issues, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have a learn program in two schools, why couldn't they have a few more, mm -hmm. right? So all the kids can attend, can avail of these programs and the benefit from them. And meanwhile, the ESL support, I definitely think, you know, these kids can use a bit more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I learned from classroom teachers, you know, interestingly, I want to know how classroom teachers work with these kids, right? Mm -hmm. So normally classroom teachers only deal with the subject matters, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they had these few kids in their classroom sitting normally in the back and uh, were very quiet in class and not engaged in any classroom activities. So these teachers were challenged. When I asked them, I interviewed teachers of uh, all subjects, right? And so they felt very challenged and they said they felt uh, um, deficient in teaching these. Mm -hmm. They felt they lacked the cultural knowledge and the skills working with uh, such children. And so they went to the ESL teachers, <coughs> sorry, uh, and the learned teachers, and which in turn added the, you know, the workload of these specialized teachers, right? Mm -hmm. So basically learned teachers and the ESL teachers worked really, really over time. Their, their services to their students are not uh, confined to campus, the classroom actually extended way beyond that, right? That's right, yeah. yes. I know a lot of ESL teachers who provide home support for some of the students as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Making yeah. sure they have Halloween costumes when the time comes oh, around. Oh, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, I've heard activities. stories of teachers yes. mm -hmm. uh, buying dictionaries for their mm -hmm. students, right? And the learned teachers worked as, you know, counsel for basically everything when mm -hmm. students need them, right? right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I think the um, LEARN program has now expanded a bit more within the oh, school yes, district yes. and I think more ESL teachers have been... Mm -hmm. um, so the good thing teams. is over mm -hmm. the years and I'd say in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. right? right? So I work closely with the classroom teachers and the school board and also talked with uh, the department and the, even an LTA involved. When I had my research you know, workshop, I invited all stakeholders mm -hmm. and to you know, share views in the same room, at least bring us to the same page, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everyone's informed of the, the situation 
you know, with these kids and the teachers. Mm -hmm. So the good thing coming <laughs> out of this, <laughs> and uh, certainly plus uh, uh, a few years ago when the Education Premier's Task Force, yes. right, yes. Uh, was a forum that we also spoke with uh, the task force members. Right. And yes. so all of these were reflected in the new uh, document, right? So now we have a whole chapter of multicultural education in the educational document. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. And recently I heard that uh, we're going to have more ESL teachers, right. yes. yeah, hired or to be hired mm -hmm. in the next yes. few years. Yes. And also learn program mm -hmm. uh, has extended to several other schools, right? right. Yes. So all yeah. kids Those can be them. yeah mm -hmm. accommodated. Yes. That's really great okay. progress. I'm okay. very happy to see that. Right, yes. Oh, well, we've come a long way. I mean, China cultures started. Mm -hmm. um, that research I did on the uh, psychosocial needs of new immigrant and refugee children exactly. and there was a huge gap and of course you've come along and that gap's mm -hmm. been narrowed as well and yeah. we can sort of see a way forward to assist them and to help mm -hmm. them to become successful. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, I'm really very glad you mentioned your research because the earliest literature I could find was from you here, and then the other one was from Multicultural Women's Organization. Right, there was yeah. a small research report, right. non-peer-reviewed re publication, yeah. and however, yeah. it was mm -hmm. a research you know, right, report, yes, right. and then there was uh, the, I think REAC also produced yes. a research report right. by Dr. Barbara Burnaby. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. all of these, it yeah. was community yes, research, together. and no <laughs> academic or yeah. education you know, yeah, like right. uh, yeah. members doing such. Mm -hmm. That's why I felt we need something, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm glad yeah. at least over the years, the past mm -hmm. years, I uh, more or less filled the gap mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. At least we have gap. some literature. <laughs> Yes, yeah, you've definitely increased the literature, and uh, which was very mm -hmm. sparse back in those days, yeah. particularly for this province anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really do appreciate that, and we appreciate the work that you've done. Now I've passed oh, on the torch, and you are that. taking it on. You know, one thing I'm really, really happy is mm -hmm. one of the participants in my study in high school, Holy Heart High School, right? Yes. I later saw her in the education building, right. attending our B.Ed. program. I was so happy to right. see her. I remember her, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, I'm so glad for you because in our uh, teaching profession, right? right. Yes. Um, there's a lack of diversity. Mm -hmm. You have all these students from diverse cultures, but we don't see much of a diversity in our teaching profession. So I'm really happy mm -hmm. this young girl right. yes. <laughs> yeah, would turn out to be a fine teacher. Yeah. yeah. And they, did, they do need to see themselves represented in the oh, teaching yeah. staff, uh, administrators. You know, the girl actually told me, yeah. said, I see you mm -hmm. as a non-white, but mm -hmm. you work as a professor. Right. I think perhaps I can do it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for the future. Thank you for the Thank opportunity. You. You're very welcome. And Sharing Our Cultures will be right back. Welcome back to Sharing Our Cultures. And joining me now in conversation is Adriana Castiano Cuti. And she is a community outreach worker with the Daybreak Parent Child Center. Welcome to Sharing Our Cultures. Thank you, Lady Eta. Did thank I get that all right? Oh, yes, <laughs> okay. you did. I wanted to make sure that I did. Now, tell me what you do as a community outreach worker here in the city. Well, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. okay. I basically work with any family that is yeah. new in St. John's. Okay. It can be somebody from the mainland. It can be somebody, somebody from international students, newcomer families, mm -hmm. whoever is new and need services for, um, we provide services for families with kids zero to six years old. Okay. So we have healthy baby clubs, we have play groups, I have a women's group that share a little bit of your name, we, we call it Sharing Joy. Mm -hmm. And we had to change the name because of COVID, because before it was Sharing Flavors. Mm -hmm. We used to cook together, I don't know how to cook, but these <laughs> ladies have so many talents, they are the ones that cook. Okay, so that's really nice. Now you are um, originally from Colombia, 
And what brought you to uh, this province? Well, I like to say that it was the good weather. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know that that's not true. No, that's <laughs> not right. true. So I am a refugee from Colombia. OK, mm -hmm. all right. And what was life like for you coming here? I mean, uh, so English is not the official language of Colombia, of course, we know. Yeah. But um, did you have to learn English when you came here, or you, did you already know some? I knew a little bit. A little bit, OK. Because, um, my first degree is in education, so my degree is modern languages. Mm -hmm. I used to be a teacher in high school, mm -hmm. and I used to teach English. <laughs> <laughs> well, then your English was excellent then. <laughs> uh, so my English was more or less good. And then when I came here, so going back to how was life for me, how has been this long journey for me, has been a big adjustment like for any newcomer to Canada. Mm -hmm. So I attended the ANC school and then I was deciding myself uh, that I wanted to do something meaningful for, my, for myself and for my family. I had two kids. Yes. So I went to Memorial, I started from zero. I said, okay, my degree stayed back in my country. I didn't have any credentials here. So I went back to I went back to university, did my degree, did my master's degree, and here I am. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I think that is a great achievement to be able to come, as you said, here as a as a refugee family with, with your uh, children and then being able to go to university and have a master's degree as well. Congratulations. Thank you, Lady. It sounds like easy, but it's not. No, oh, I, know, no, oh, I definitely, I know it isn't easy. I have done a master's degree, and I know it isn't easy at all. But it takes a lot of um, self-discipline and perseverance, you know, to be able to stick with it and, and stick through and, and get it done, which is what you have done and which makes you a role model for a lot of oh, our young people you who so are, grow much. are growing up. I don't know, I take that very humbly mm -hmm. because um, I think I have learned that mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah. I came here in 2003 mm -hmm. and when you arrive, I, in my case I arrived full of hopes yes. and full of dreams mm -hmm. and it's not that you can mm, reach those goals. I think it's possible but I think it's very difficult. It's, mm -hmm. it's a long journey. Uh, it was difficult with the kids because they were small, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a complete new adjustment. It's like being in a different planet. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me about what is the beauty, why do you like about Newfoundland? So besides the breathtaking beauty of this island that I absolutely <laughs> love, I think is um, that people are very kind mm -hmm. and that you are able to connect. Mm -hmm. because your, your social capital is gone mm -hmm. and that is very difficult. You need to go in survival mode and mm -hmm. start looking for opportunities. And one thing that was very important was volunteering. Yes, all right, so you did a lot of volunteering. Tell us with some of the places you volunteered and well, what that meant for you. Yeah. I started with um, Bethesda Church okay. as an ESL teacher. <laughs> <laughs> helping yeah. um, other newcomers right. attending yes. these classes. Yeah. And, and it's amazing. You think that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's, it's a big contribution. Yes. It's very good. Yeah. And I also volunteered for more than five years with the Multicultural Women Organization. Right. Yeah. That was amazing. And I also worked with REAC a little bit mm -hmm. as a volunteer. Right, OK. And what were some, I know you did some language teaching to help ESL or uh, students who English was an additional language for them. What else did you do? I think that the... mostly what many newcomers tend to do, a lot of uh, interpretation oh, for other right. newcomers yes. that need to go for mm -hmm. school appointments, medical appointments, and also information on how to navigate the social mm -hmm. services right. in the city. Yeah. Because that's really difficult when you come to a new place. Like you say, it's almost like being a new planet. Another planet and not knowing where to go, where to get the information you need. And uh, so it's great to have someone like you. You have the lived experience of being a newcomer here. And I've heard so many good things about you and how much you've touched the lives of so many families yeah. here. Thank so, you, Lloyd. Yes, we're very, very proud of you. Very happy. Thank you. I, I think that what is important for anybody that is listening to us or watching this program is mm -hmm. to know it's overwhelming mm -hmm. and sometimes you are very hopeless. Mm -hmm. So you go from all these roller coaster of emotions mm -hmm. thinking, wow, this is too hard, how I can do this? Believe me, you can. Mm -hmm. And 
you think that what I can do for other people is simple things. Mm -hmm. I, I also went to volunteer in a food bank, mm -hmm. and I tell the families that I work with, you don't know how many talents and how many skills do you have until you put them to work. Yes. And I remember when I came to Canada in, um, in Montreal, one of the immigration, immigration officers told me, welcome to the country of do it yourself. And I was like, <laughs> And what is that? Well, in, in, in 18 years, I realized what is <laughs> doing it yourself. DIY. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do have to um, persevere and, and you know, find ways in which you can actually help integrate. And you say with the help and support from others, you can do it. You have with you here some excellent work. And I'm oh going to hold it up because <laughs> I want you to talk about it. Well, now tell me what you so I had three passions in life. Okay. My first passion is working with people. Okay. My second passion is doing needlework. Okay. And I like reading and hiking. Right. Yes, I, I so, caught you reading when you were waiting here. <laughs> okay. So, when, with COVID, because mm -hmm. of COVID, we have right. so much time right. to do absolutely nothing yeah. and being at home. Mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to do. I like working on tiny projects, okay. and I decided to do these little birdies. And this this technique is row applique. Okay. So there is applique that is even more sophisticated, gorgeous. Right. I am not an expert on that one, <laughs> okay. but I really like doing this one. I I spend uh, like three hours doing one piece like this. Yeah. That's really intricate. If you can just hold it up for me again, so uh, yeah. I can see that. Uh -huh. Okay. So you oh, just put a little a bird. Yeah. And the sun. And it has a name, Mario. Mario. Okay. Yeah, so all of them have names. <laughs> all of them have names, okay. That's Mario. He's Mar cute. Yeah, yes. and I result, I also repurpose things. So these mm. are the things, these are the little clicks oh, in the yes, the, in in the, the, in the can. In the, yeah. <gasps> and so you can use them for hooks and yes. hanging things up. Yeah, oh, and, and then I decided this is very nice for a tiny house. Now that we are thinking about, oh, Yes, downsizing. <laughs> yeah, downsizing. <laughs> so you can use this in, in tiny art yes. for tiny houses. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're so innovative and creative. All right, so you've got this one. I am part of the... Tell us about Miguel. Miguel. Oh. I am also part of the um, Guild of Embroiderers oh, okay. in St. John's, the chapter okay. in St. John's. So mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of needlework there. That's, okay. that's what we do. Well, there are pieces here in the rooms that are actually done by my fellow. Okay. Mm, ladies there in, in the group. Okay. But I think that they, they know me for, for, for mixing all these bright colors and doing these tiny things mm -hmm. that looks like more like a funky art. <laughs> so yeah. It's beautiful art. Yeah, and, and it's, it's very simple. It's, it's just any little piece of, of, of fabric that you want to work with and little pieces. It's, it's not, it looks a little bit uh, complicated. It's not. Okay. <laughs> so how long did it, now did you do this whilst you were in Colombia or did you learn this art, needlework and embroidery when you came here? No, I, I studied with nuns when I was in, oh. in elementary and high school. In Colombia? And, yeah, in Colombia. Okay. So we used to do these kind of things in, in one of the classes, but I was very reluctant at that time. I didn't know that I liked it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then over time when you find that you have a lot of spare time and you have a lot of energy like I am a hurricane mm -hmm. I yes. think <laughs> so I, I I try to this is what I do to mm -hmm. think about things right. I think that this is the other purpose to take care of my crazy right okay so that's good <laughs> no that's good that's good and they're beautiful I mean and uh, things that you can have for a long time yeah. yes things mm -hmm. that you can share with people and share. that's yeah. right yeah and I'm talking about uh, sharing we want to find out from you if, as a newcomer has arrived here, or maybe they see this, because this is going to be on the World Wide Web. They can be watched anywhere in the world now, and is thinking of coming to St. John's or Newfoundland Labrador. What would you advise them? What would they need to know either before they come or when they come here to be as successful and resourceful as you are? Just uh, give them some few tips. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you already have the desire. Uh, and in many cases, you have the need yes. to find a safe place for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of giving yourself time and being kind to yourself, mm -hmm. because sometimes we put a lot of pressures on ourselves. And you know what? I learned that 
also in 18 years, you need to give yourself time, time for everything. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a process for you to learn the language, to learn to navigate the culture, to appreciate where you are and what is available there. Mm -hmm. And we have one shared in common, our humanity. Mm -hmm. We can connect with other human beings if we are willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that in my case, that is pretty easy mm -hmm. because I am an outgoing person. Mm -hmm. But if you, are a, if you are a shy person, a, a shy individual, that doesn't mean that you can do it. It's going to take a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. but that's the magic of Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. And I have been in other cities in Canada, mm -hmm. and, but I always tell my clients and the people that I met on my work, you know what? The best people in Canada is in your land because they are so kind. Like, it doesn't matter where you go. I have a lot of troubles understanding sometimes. It's, <laughs> it's, my, it's my problem, I guess. <laughs> it's my deficiency uh, that I go to a little town and I ask a question and it's like, I couldn't understand very well. Yes. And if you have a coward friend, they say, yes. do you understood? No, let's go and <laughs> ask again. No, no way! And I'm like, oh my God! <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, I have learned to right. just say that you want to that you couldn't capture what they said. Yes. Can you speak slowly? <laughs> Can you write it for me, please? Yes. And that's it. So be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time. Yeah. Work on your skills. You have many talents and skills that you don't know yes. that you have. Right. And you've been one of the most wonderful immigrants that I've met. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's uh, really been inspiring having you and listening to all what you've achieved since you've been here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ludita, for your invitation. Yeah, it has welcome. been my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. And Sharing Our Cultures will be right back. Thanks to Dr. Shumeli and Adriana Castiano Kuti, and to you for joining us today. See you again next time on Sharing Our Cultures. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Canada is a multicultural country, and I know that there are a lot of people like me out there. We need a support to do our job in our native language. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts, broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships.